South Park's latest Paramount Plus special, South Park Streaming Wars, just dropped, and I hope you caught it, especially since none of you seem to realize that season 25 even ended back in March. Well, also they barely advertised the special, so there's that. But overall, I had a ton of fun with the special. It managed to be a natural progression of the story and character development in season 25, tied in a couple of older South Park stories, parodied a classic 70s crime noir, all while delivering some of the most over-the-top meta-textual commentary we've ever seen from the show. I'm often impressed with their ability to weave meta-commentary into an unrelated narrative, but this was really next level, so let's break it all down. But when you're done with this video, make sure to take a peek at the one I dropped a few days back, Ellis, Mark, and I broke down all of our favorite heartfelt moments in South Park history, and I think it turned out really great. I also have a video about season 25 and about a dozen other South Park videos if you haven't seen those yet. Alright, let's break down just how they were able to weave so many different ideas into one cohesive story. The main issue at play in this episode is that Denver is facing a drought. Due to the effects of global man bear pig. A, a Just want to immediately say how much I appreciate that South Park is committed to Man Bear Pig being their stand-in for climate change. It's built around their decades-old joke at Al Gore's expense, but they've really just owned it in recent years. I find it really hilarious just as a part of South Park's lore and world building. But basically, Man Bear Pig's ravaging of the mountain streams in Colorado has caused less water to trickle down into Denver, leading to the city to declare a drought. This also loops in another character from South Park history, the owner of a particular water park. Have you all forgotten about the pee pee? Honestly, I kinda had forgotten about pee pee because that's an episode I tend to skip. Just a little too much pee for me. But I have to admit, I love how they tied him into this episode. Now, on top of this man bear pig issue, the water up in the mountains is being increasingly used by weed farms like Tegrity and Credigree Farms. This is how the title of the special comes into play narratively and metatextually. Think of these farms as the streaming services. The farms learn that if they use less than their allotted monthly water, they have the right to sell subscriptions to that excess water and make some extra money, as long as they prove their water is making it down to the reservoir. So Tolkien's father hires Stan and Tolkien to make a little boat to float down the stream and see if it makes it down to Denver. We're about to start our very own streaming service. Gonna be honest, at first I thought this entire metaphor was a stretch, but the way this plays out is so, so funny. Once it's proven that the streaming systems work, tons of other farms try to get in on it, like Tegrity. Then other people start to try and capitalize on the streaming craze by buying up as much property as they can in the mountains and sending as many boats down the river as possible. So this is obviously commentary on the state of television and video streaming at the moment. Companies like Netflix proved that video streaming was viable and all of a sudden countless competitors pop up. Now we have Hulu, Amazon, HBO Max, Paramount Plus, Peacock, etc. And companies like Amazon will sink huge amounts of money into their content pipeline, while other platforms' content starts to dwindle. This is basically the idea behind this shot where Randy's Tegrity boat is sunk by an entire fleet of the Custler Industries boats. A streaming service! But this metaphor is genius because in the end, the people on the receiving end of these subscription services can only consume so much content. So in this story, there's only so much water to go around. Ultimately, paying for a dozen streaming services isn't really sustainable. Everyone at the end of the day, there's only going to be like three streaming services. But obviously the thing here is that Matt and Trey have first-hand experience working with multiple services, and that's where the metatextual nature of this special gets so funny to me. In the episode, Stan and Tolkien are basically Matt and Trey. They initially agreed to make boats for Tolkien's dad at Credigree Farms for $20 a pop, until other farms start asking them to make boats for them. First, of course, Randy. Oh, uh, yeah, we could probably build you something, yeah. And then, Custler Industries, who gives them a huge deal. Now, here's what this is about. Back in 2019, HBO Max purchased exclusive streaming rights to South Park for $500 million. This included the entire existing library of South Park episodes, plus any future episodes that air on Comedy Central. This was, of course, before Comedy Central's parent company, formerly Viacom, now Paramount, got into the streaming game themselves with Paramount+. Plus. So you can imagine they were a bit regretful that one of the most successful animated series of all time, a series that they own, was on a rival streaming service. This is why in summer of 2021, Viacom struck a new massive deal with Matt and Trey, this time for over $900 million. This deal did three major things. 
One, it guaranteed South Park would run for at least six more seasons. Two, it would move South Park's existing library to Paramount Plus in 2025 after their contract with HBO Max expired, and probably most controversially, three, it would circumnavigate the existing HBO Max contract by creating these Paramount Plus specials, or as Viacom initially dubbed them, movies, that would live exclusively on Paramount Plus. Since they never air on Comedy Central, they are not required to move over to HBO Max, and Viacom gets their exclusive South Park content for their streaming service, which I'm sure must have made HBO Max pretty angry. Your son and his friends just made exclusive deals for multiple streaming services. Especially because in this new deal, South Park Studios is actually producing fewer episodes for each televised season, which is why season 25 only aired six episodes, and why none of you knew the season was over when I posted my season review in March. So now HBO Max is only receiving six episodes on their streaming service a year, whereas before they were getting ten. And obviously the ones to make it out on top of all of this are Matt and Trey, who have now been at the center of nearly a billion and a half dollars worth of streaming deals. Everyone is fighting and trying to get rich and we're just in the middle doing our thing. How much money's enough, Stan? Although, this episode also very clearly expresses a bit of regret on South Park Studios' part. Stan, Tolkien, and the kids are exhausted by the workload. Dude, I'm starting to think we took on too much. It's okay. It's not okay! We haven't even finished Karen's boats yet! And this actually makes sense when you consider that this is probably the most South Park these guys have made in this short amount of time in years. Back in the day, South Park would split its seasons in half and take a hiatus in the middle, usually running around seven episodes at a time. They later changed this so that the seasons were shorter overall, but they would make them in one quick burst towards the end of the year, dropping ten episodes in about three months. But since signing this new huge deal with Paramount+, Plus, Matt and Trey made two full hour-long specials that released in November and December, then six straight episodes that ran from late January to early March, and now a few months later, they've dropped another 48-minute special on Paramount+. Plus. We're going to march right over to where this guy lives and tell him that you can't possibly take on another streaming service without sacrificing the quality of your product. It seems like they've worked with very little time off from November through May, seven months straight, and are likely going straight into the next special, which will certainly follow up this special's cliffhanger. But what a hilarious way to focus that stress and regret. The literal third Paramount Plus special is basically lambasting the entire streaming industry as a whole. Now I also think that their use of PP was another mini jab at Paramount Plus. PP? Paramount Plus? Early in the episode, he's a character who is basically utilizing the other streaming services, not unlike Viacom was using HBO Max to house South Park, but by the end of the episode, they're manipulating the entire system to give themselves the upper hand in these streaming wars, systematically taking out the other services and diluting the remaining content stream with piss. This episode also ties in this Water Commission character who is clearly designed after Jack Nicholson's character Jack Giddis from Chinatown, which makes a ton of sense since it's a crime noir story story about the water department drying up land so it can be purchased affordably, with the intention of irrigating it and making a major profit later. Clearly Matt and Trey saw parallels in the streaming game. We also see that PP is working with Man Bear Pig himself, clearly commentary on how massive corporations don't want to work to prevent climate change because they actively profit off of the ways it wreaks havoc on society. Pretty bleak stuff. Now the other major storyline here is absolutely ridiculous, but I love the way that it's following up on the big part of season 25. Cart Cartman is basically just fully depressed that he's poor and lives in a hot dog, even though the entire reason they have to live there is because he refused to let his mom work for a living in the season 25 episode City People. But this time, Cartman continuously tries to manipulate his mother into getting fake breasts so she can marry a rich man that will take care of them. Fortunately, for the first time in 25 years, we are actually seeing Leanne just refuse to give in to Eric's demands. After City People, she is completely fed up. Cartman is finally reaping what he sows. It was so funny how the kids thought that Mrs. Cartman was sick because of how Eric framed the boob job he wants her to get. Okay, I just... I need to try and raise some money because my mom needs to have a surgery and we can't afford it. God, Eric is just the worst. But it's really sweet how even though they all have problems with Cartman, the moment they think his mom is sick, the kids fully empathize and cut him in on the streaming profits. They're just good boys. And Cartman, I'm sorry. Thanks, Cap. This storyline, of course, ends with Cartman's stubbornness absolutely getting the best of him. He brings his mom to the plastic surgeon, boob job paid for, and she refuses to get it. He tries to manipulate her into doing it by saying he'll get the boob job himself, and she calls him on it. 
And well, you saw what happened. I don't think there has ever been a more ridiculous image in all of South Park than Cartman at school with his giant fake tits. Just insane. Overall, I did really enjoy this special, but it's clear that they have to stick the landing for it to really matter. This is a fun setup, but if they don't bring it home, I'm not really sure how much I'll go back and rewatch this first one. I like the little things like how this follows up Cartman and Leanne's new life situation, and how now that Tolkien and Stan live near each other, they're becoming closer friends. It was kind of cool that this started out as a Stan and Tolkien adventure. There were also some really pretty shots in animation. I love the opening image of Denver. They had a gorgeous shot of the bus pulling up to Tegrity Farms that looked like the animation framing from the usual intro sequence. There's a scene where Tolkien's dad climbs up this mountain and the landscapes are just gorgeous. Even the scenes with the boat flowing all the way down the stream to the reservoir was just beautifully animated. There's also this very small subplot where everyone calls Randy Karen because he's entitled and keeps calling the police, and yeah, that tracks with his character trajectory. It was funny, but kind of inconsequential. It also kind of feels a little late for South Park to be commenting on the Karen thing. It's going to be interesting to see how they follow up the final cliffhanger, though, with PP and Man Bear Pig exacerbating the drought so that people will have to use pee for water. Also, Man Bear Pig seemingly killing Tolkien's dad. Hopefully he survives because that would be a big bummer. Though I gotta say, the visual of Man Bear Pig in these gangster clothes is super funny. Like I said, my opinion overall is likely going to have to depend on how satisfying the follow up is. I would be willing to guess that they dropped that in about a month, though maybe they'll take longer. Post-COVID's two specials were a month apart, but they also were the literal last two months of the year, so technically they still have an entire five months to finish this one. I do have to say though, if these Paramount Plus specials are going to so closely follow up the events of the Comedy Central seasons that can't be watched on Paramount Plus, people are gonna get confused. Obviously I'll be watching it all, but the fact that people cannot watch all of this content on one single streaming service is a bummer. I've gotten a lot of confused comments about it already. I was personally hoping that these specials would stand more on their own rather than be so interconnected with the televised episodes. The post-COVID specials technically tied into the vaccination special, but the context was pretty clear in those episodes, and they felt so unique and different comparatively. This felt like another long South Park episode that would have just fit into a normal season like as a two-parter or something. I kind of hope that next year they take a different approach, closer to the post-COVID specials. But I guess we'll see. And what do y'all think? Did you enjoy the newest South Park special? How do you feel about how they're handling the regular seasons versus the specials? And is there anything you wish they'd do differently? Let me know below in the comments, and I'll see you next time. Peace. Johnny! Two